Hi folks, Travis Fox here with FoxOptic.com. Today we're going to be taking a little look at the new Pulsar XG50 uh, in comparison to the Pulsar XP50. I've been getting a lot of questions lately on, you know, which one's right for me, why would I choose one over the other. Obviously they're both 640 by 480 uh, sensor resolution, but we start to get into the 12 versus 17 micron and I think that starts to get confusing for guys. And what I'm hoping is, is that I can simplify this for you. So let's take a look at the scopes back here. The first thing you're going to notice right off the bat is essentially the scopes look basically identical. Um, you're going to find that pretty much all the way around in terms of the lens on the front, the design aesthetic. But what's really going to start to tell the tale on the difference between these two units is how they work out in the field in terms of what you're going to see in the image and what's actually taking place inside. So we're going to get them outside here and I'm going to actually show you that. I'm, we're from Missouri so I think that's the best way to do it. We're the show me state so we'll get them out there and I'll get some video footage. But real quick I want to jump back here to the whiteboard and just kind of give you a quick explanation of what's actually going on. Um, so as we're in, in the XP we are running a 17 micron and in the XG we're running the new that's running the BAE 12 micron sensor so the BAE 12 micron sensor the sensor and this is I just drew this little representation up here to try to explain it is physically smaller that's telling you the pixel pitch or the center to center between each one of the little thermistors that's on that sensor which are basically the temperature measuring devices on there. Um, so what's going on here is as you're seeing here where they've got the lens diameter the same in both units we jump over here and look as the lens magnification goes up in the same diameter lens the exit pupil of light gets smaller and so if we, if we were to increase magnification without either increasing the diameter of the lens to cause this to come up also or decreasing the size of the sensor, what you'd effectually be doing like in the case of the 17 micron in the XP50 up here is if you were to leave this alone and just take it to the 3X, you'd just be hitting the center portion of your sensor. You wouldn't be flooding all the thermistors with light. So they've either got to increase the diameter of the lens itself or decrease the physical size of the sensor which is what they're doing in the 12 micron BAE sensor so you basically that's also going to affect on the other end here it's going to defect, affect your field of view I think this is 8.8 .8, uh, on the XG so you're going to get a narrower field of view in the XG which is a product of the 3x magnification you're going to get a little wider field of view obviously on the 2x coming out of the XP50 so if you're looking for a wider field of view a little bit you know shorter range than the XP um, the XG is going to help you with longer range uh, detection and identification again you know not to try to make this confusing but essentially they're both 640 480 resolution the only big change is is by decreasing the size of this sensor you can increase this magnification without physically increasing the diameter of the lens and the benefit to that is they make things bigger on the display because they run the same display in the back by physically making the line sizes bigger you know and heavier you know in the one versus the other as we're increasing our pixel ratio because you're you're digitally zooming or stretching the image you're going to maintain magnification better in a unit that starts with a higher magnification lower field of view because essentially there's less stuff on the same display area so you know without getting way into that just know that's how come this one's going to get you 3 to 24 x and this one's going to get you 2 to 16 x and the trade-off is they're going to both have a very good high resolution image but the trade-off to get this 3 to 24 in this unit is going to be a loss of basically the same proportion in field of view on the other end of the scope. So in a nutshell, that's what's going to determine which unit's right for you. Another little caveat in there that you'll see when we get them out here is you're going to get into a little bit narrower uh, depth of field in this 3X unit versus the 2X unit. 
and what that's going to equate to and you'll see that uh, when we take them outside here is in my opinion the XP50 the general image is going to look like it's more in focus than in the XG the XG is going to have a tendency to look really critically in focus or crisp on the target subject but some of the backs going to wash out a bit and that's as you move up in magnification in the XG depth of field or the area that's able to remain in focus shrinks so therefore you're going to have to tweak focus a little bit but you're you know more in an XG to get whatever target area you're looking at to be in focus uh, whereas the XP is just generally going to be focused better but again that's not really a critical thing but I'm just trying to explain why in some videos you might say well I think the background looks a little better in the XG is just because the critical area of focus is, a, is changing you know in relationship in that background it's a little more noticeable but uh, best thing for us to do now let's take them outside we'll get a really good look at it and I'll be back in with you here in a minute okay I'm gonna go ahead and start the record in all of these We'll get them fired up here and I'm going to go ahead and nuke them all so we're starting with fresh nukes on all of them which is basically just calibration. Um, so I've got this one in scan mode on the rangefinder. Uh, as you can see them horses are that one's 61 yards that one's about 72 so I'm going to hold right there so you can kind of see between the difference in field of view between those two and then we'll bump magnification so there's 6x that fence is kind of in the way but I think that'll give you a pretty good idea there's 4 there's 8 in the XP50 there's 12 in the XG there's 24 in the XG and 16 in the XP uh, let's roll back here at distance so I've got that bin back here uh, we'll see if we can ping that bin it's about 790 yards back to that bin so there you can see we're, we're still up at the 24 power on the XG. I'm going to nuke it again here just to make sure we're as clear as possible. I'm going to nuke the XP again. Um, so now let's run the magnifications back on them. So there we are at the 3X in the XG and 2X in the XP. Again, there's 6x in the XG and 4 in the XP. So I, I think what you should be able to see by this point, I'll just kind of keep bumping them up, is that in all honesty, they're, they're really resolution for resolution about, about the equivalent. So like really what we're looking at here is, is more a product of do I want that extra magnification or not? So, you know, if you're after extra magnification and and you just want to be able to really get long range detects in that, then the XG is probably going to be the unit for you. If you like that little bit wider field of view, then you could certainly save yourself a thousand bucks and go with the XP. Um, it, it's one of them deals where it's not really a question of the money or if one's better than the other it's just what's going to suit you better in terms of higher magnification or wider field of view if you're looking for these or any other of the pulsar products be sure to give us a call toll free at 877-806-2977 or check them out on the web at www.foxoptic.com Typically, I'm available by phone from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Central Standard Time. So, again, if you have any questions at all, if you're apprehensive about which unit's right for you or if there's anything I can help you with, give me a call and we'll discuss your situation uniquely. Thanks for watching and have a great day.